come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of the imagination. I am a man normally filled with the milk of human kindness, but prepared, I'm afraid, to curdle your blood with a tale not of life and death, but rather death and life. I offer you one small comfort. It could hardly happen today. But in the last century, on the old Montgomery estate in Maryland, in the great dark rambling house called Westerly, it was easier to be marked for death than in this one. Yes, Mother. You look at home in your coffin. Sleep fast. It's taken many years, but you've made your son a very happy man. It's all mine at last. Westerly, I'm running the jewels. I'm my own man. How I've hated you the way you kept me on a leash like some old hound dog. Well, now the money's mine. And you'll hardly need the ring they've let you wear to your grave. I'll take them so I can buy me. You'd hang on to them even if that. But you're alive. You're not dead. Oh, help me now. I should have known you'd come back to haunt me. Even before we got you to the grave. Our mystery drama, Cold Storage, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Ruby D. and John Barraglay. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. robbing a grave. Many years before Buford Montgomery found himself engaged in essentially the same activity, were every bit as shocked when the corpse whose rings they were tearing off suddenly sat up, alive. An epileptic seizure in other times could counterfeit death. The ghouls, of course, had a recourse. They ran away. Buford Montgomery has to stay and face his problem. Buford, will you put me down? When, when I'm ready. I am quite able to walk. I, I want to make sure you don't run. What are you talking about? What, what are you doing? Locking me in? No, no, no. Keep away from me. It's all right, Mother. I'm not going to harm you. I, I heard you standing over me in that coffin. I, I want the... I need Dr. Wayne. That doddering old numbskull. He almost had you buried alive. You know he signed your death certificate. But how could he? I am alive. Oh, yes. I'm quite satisfied you are no ghost. But what what happened? Another of your epileptic seizures. Oh. We were all convinced this one was fatal. At last. Only it wasn't. Quite a disappointment to my beloved son. Well... At least I know now where we stand. Now, you open that door and send Hannah up to me. Not yet, Mother. Why? Because, you see, we don't really know just quite how we stand, do we? Buford, don't... Don't you look at me like that. How was I looking, Mama dear? You... You want me dead back in that coffin. I want all the things I thought were finally mine. The house, the estate, the money, and most, oh, most of all, the freedom to be a man. Oh. Look at me, Mama. <laughs> Listen to me call you that, Mama. A grown man, 38 years old, tied to his mother's apron strings like, like some sniveling little boy. I, I never meant to keep you tied down. Oh, yes, you did. You even did it with the judge. Father's life wasn't his own either. You killed him. You... You are mad. Keep away. Keep away. You want to kill me. I'm not going to kill you, Mama. You know I haven't got the strength of will for that. Oh, oh, of course you won't, son. But 
You can have anything you want now we've had this little talk. Now, now please get Hannah like a good boy. Oh, no, Mama. I don't need you anymore. You left me everything in your will. But I'm not dead. To all the world except me, you are. And you're going to stay that way. If you come one step closer, I'll scream. No one will hear you. Not in this big old house. Westerly's thick walls have no ears. What, what are you going to do to me? You'll see, Mother. You'll see. Look, you... you you're going to put me back in that coffin and... and marry me, you love me. Yes. I haven't any choice now. Oh, please, please, please. Don't worry. You'll be quite comfortable. I'm going to bury you alive. But not in the coffin. Anna? Yes, Master Buford? I want you here, in the hall. What is it, sir? Where's William? He's in the stable, Master, grooming the horses for the funeral tomorrow. You want I should fetch him? I... No, not yet. Uh, sit down. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Now, where to begin? Uh, uh, Hannah, you were mighty beholden to my father, weren't you? Judge Montgomery was a fine man. Was very kind to you and your son. The judge was powerful good to me and William. And my mother? Mrs. Montgomery is a fine lady. It's been a privilege to have served her as housekeeper. And will you consider it a privilege to serve me in the same capacity? If you want me, sir. And William? Where I go, William goes. You know, he's just a, a, a great big overgrown baby. Has to be cared for like one. Or they'd shut him away somewhere, isn't and... I wouldn't ever let them do that to my boy. He couldn't stand being shut in. He'd... Why, he'd... You wouldn't let them do that to him, would you, Master Buford? Not... If I can count on you to help me. You can, sir. You can. Well, uh, what about William? He does what I tell him. He's old as you are, but he has the mind of a child. I'd want to be absolutely sure of both of you. I don't understand you, Master Buford. Then I'll make myself plainer. I think you must have always hated my mother. Why did you stay on after Father died? I see. Hey, because I... Where else could I go? You're sure it wasn't because you were afraid? Afraid of what? Not of, Hannah. For. <gasps> for William. Right? Oh, don't look so terrified and, and trapped. I know it all, Hannah. I know it all. Master Buford, I... How you must really hate us all. Even father at the end. Not the judge. Never the judge. Even after what he made you sign? What would the judge ever have wanted me to sign? A confession that you saw your son William commit a murder ten years ago. Oh! How did you know? It's one of the advantages of my dear mother's unexpected death. It was among the papers the lawyer turned over to me. So she did know. All these years... <laughs> How could Randolph have done that to me? You know why. You were an eyewitness. And you know that William wasn't alone. It was an accident. And you were only boys. Pretty old for boys, Hannah. We were both going on 19. And the Copley kid was only 15. It was only my father being a judge that saved us all. Any jury in horse country like this could have told that boy's neck wasn't broken by any fall from a horse. The finger marks were gouged into the flesh. The rope burns were raw on his wrists. Why did you do it, Master Buford? Not I, Hannah. Remember? William was the culprit. William didn't know what he was doing. You egged him on. If I did, I didn't mean it to go so far. William didn't... doesn't know his own strength. What does it matter? It's nearly 20 years ago. Why do you rake up old ashes? There are certain things I have to be sure of. What? In spite of everything, your complete loyalty to me. I have little choice. If you have any confession... I have it. 
in your own handwriting. And William's scrawl, too. I'm going to ask you to stretch your conscience further. Come with me. No, no, Master Buford. Don't bring me to the coffin. I don't want to look at her. Stop I don't want him. Stop that. Here. Look. Open your eyes. Oh. It's empty. She's gone. What have you done with her? She's in her bedroom. Upstairs. What she... <laughs> I'm afraid that blind old boggler, Dr. Wayne, slightly exaggerated my mother's untimely end. You mean she's alive? And unfortunately quite well. <laughs> I see the news is as disappointing to you as it was to me. Oh, don't try to hide it, Hannah. You know you hated her quite as much as I. I won't deny it. The humiliation. The day-by-day degradations your mother has put me through all these years since your father died. I can never forgive her for them. I'm glad to hear it. When she was dead, I was glad. God forgive me. It was one of the happiest days of my life. And mine. That's why she's going to stay dead, Hannah. You're mad. You can't murder your own mother. Nothing is further from my mind. No. Dear Mama will come to no physical harm. You and William will see to it that her bodily needs are well taken care of. And I... As complete master of Westerly, at last, we'll see to it in turn that you and William are taken care of. What are you going to do with her? First of all, Hannah, you're going to explain to William. Then bring him here so we can nail up this coffin and the burial services can be completed tomorrow. Master Buford, no, you can't. Better tell William to bring a sack of meal or corn. Won't do to have the coffin too light. How? How on earth can you hide your mother from from everyone? (laughs) On earth. That's very apt. I'll tell you what we're going to do with her, Hannah. Just what we do with the roots and the preserves. We're going to put Mama in cold storage. Make sure to drive them home, William. Do seem a shame burying a whole good sack of good feed. I picked up the worthiest what I could find. That's enough now. Finish up. Finish now. Got the lantern, Hannah? Yes, sir. All right. Did you strip the bed in the spare room, Hannah? Yes, sir, I did. William, you go on up there and bring that bed and all the furniture downstairs to the old hidey hole, right? Sure will. Where's this this hidey hole? William could tell you as good as me. Or better. He's the one who found it. Must be, oh, uh, 15 years ago. 16, Master Buford. That was the year Miss Prudence dropped her first fold. That's when old Mr. Todd Hunter, the vet man, told me all about his daddy and your grandfather and how they dug out the hidey hole and made it out of a big room like a station on the Underground Railroad. William, go see to the furniture. Yes, sir. Take me a while... To get the bed apart. Take your time. The Underground Railroad? You mean this was a slave station? To hide out escaped slaves being passed through the north? What it was. But you can't put your mother in a place like that. Why not? She spent her lifetime trying to turn the clock back. Make a slave of everyone else. Why shouldn't it be her turn? For a change. <laughs> sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child, as King Lear had occasion to remark. Still, on the record, Mama is not much of a prize either. Let's leave her in cold storage until we return shortly with Act Two. that pass, Mrs. Randolph Price Montgomery is finding her quarters somewhat less elegant than she liked, but at least they are less confining than a coffin. Buford, her son and now heir, has been living as high as he promised himself in cutting a swath as the county's most sought-after bachelor. I declare, Buford... 
I thought I'd never be able to coax you away from all the other ladies. Nancy Lee, they may have had my arms, but my heart was with you. Well, I'd have felt a lot sure of that if I'd had your name a little more often in my car. I just don't want us to get talked about too much. Why ever not? Would you be ashamed to have your name linked with mine? Why, Nancy Lee, you know better than that. Aren't you going to sit with me, Shirley? Oh, why, why, sure, honey. Hold my hand. Just lies in mine like a little bird. Now that's more like my Buford. Kiss me. Angel. Still the same old thrill. Gives me goosebumps all over. Oh, that's nice. I wouldn't want to think I'd lost the power to get you going. Why would you think that? Well, I'll tell you, Buford. I thought when your mother died, it would give us a chance to be closer than ever. I mean, since we could come right out in the open. I didn't think it would start you chasing after every pretty girl in sight. I wouldn't take a one of them or exchange any of them for you. Now, I'm right glad to hear you say that, sugar, because I'm afraid you're not going to be a bachelor anymore. Huh? I got something to tell you. You're going to have to go back to being a family man again, I'm afraid. What? What what, what are you saying? That that you're going to be a daddy. Aren't you proud? Good Lord. Are are, are you sure? (laughs) That I'm in a family way? Well, it's very easy for a girl to be sure of that. Well, um, what what, what are are we going to do? Well, with Mama Gaunt, there's no problem at all. You're just going to have to make an honest woman of me. My parents surely won't object. And <laughs> you wouldn't want the colonel to come after you with a gun knowing that my daddy is the best shot in South Carolina. Now, wait a minute, Nancy Lee. You... Oh, Sugar, you know I'm only funning. And I know you're going to be every bit as happy as I am once you get used to it. Oh, honey, aren't you just thrilled to death? We're going to get married. <laughs> Come in. Excuse me, Master Beauty. What is it, Hannah? It's about Mrs. Montgomery. She isn't that yet. I meant your mother, sir. Oh. Oh, what about her? She keeps asking for you. Well, tell her I'm... Just don't tell her anything. You haven't said anything about the wedding tomorrow. No, sir, but... uh, But what? About your mother. She... She wants to talk to you. And it does seem so inhumane to keep her locked up alone. She sees you or William every day, doesn't she? Yes. Her quarters are comfortable and clean, aren't they? Yes. She's in perfectly good health? Oh, yes, never better. More's the pity. Well, then? She's... She's lonely. So was I all those years she had me under her thumb. And I'm not going back to that. By tomorrow, I'm going to have my own woman. And a beauty at that. Mother's not going to spoil that for me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Good. Now get out of here. And take the whiskey carafe with you and fill it up. It's almost empty again. Yes, sir, Master Buford. Sir? William? Yes, Mama? Take this carafe and fill it with Master Buford's bourbon and bring it back to him in his study. Yes, (laughs) sir. I reckon old Master Buford's getting himself liquored up for the bachelor party. I reckon he's trying to build himself some Dutch courage. What do you mean, Ma? I mean, I don't think he exactly figured on getting tied up again when he cut his mama's apron string. You. Look at that. It started into rain. Such a pretty night, too. Hmm. Let's go on up to bed, hmm? My husband. All he ever seems to think of now he's made me his little goods and chattel. Nancy Lee, all I mean was I'm tired. Tired of me after two short weeks? Uh, you know I didn't mean that. Well, come in and lay your head on Mama's breast. Don't say that. Well, heaven, don't be so sensitive. Your Mama's dead and gone. Yes. Although sometimes, I swear to goodness, I get the feeling in this rickety old house she's still sort of around. Oh? What makes you think that? Well, don't jump so, darling. It's just a 
Just a spooky feeling. Maybe you and me should have gotten rid of Westerly and gone back on to South Carolina with Mom and Papa. No. We can't leave here. Well, all right, sugar. Don't take on so. I, I, I didn't mean to jump at you. Oh, of course you didn't. You just so kind to little old me, and you were so generous to lend the colonel all that money to go back south with Mama to build up our old, lovely old plantation again. It must be the size of half the state what it's costing to restore it. Well, it had gotten run down, sort of, but... You've nothing to worry about, Buford. You'll get the money back. Of course, of course, Nancy Lee. <gasps> what is it? Oh, this old porch. It, it's starting to leak like a sieve. I'll have William look at it in the morning. That big old lame brain. Buford, if we're going to stay here at Westerly, I want some changes made. I'd like to do some rebuilding. We can discuss that in the and morning. I want some new servants. I don't want that silly old William and Hannah around. They've got to go. No. But, Buford... I... Whatever happens, William and Hannah stay. And we stay. That's... Final. My Buford, you are so masterful when you get mad, I could just swoon. <laughs> Come on, let's go on up to bed. And I'll show you just how wonderful it is to be married. I came out with your mother's tray, Master Buford, and she nearly caught me. What the Sam Hill was Nancy Lee doing in the cellar? I don't know. She didn't see anything? I'm sure not. Does she suspect anything? I don't think Damn I... Damn that woman... That's her now. Get out, Hannah. I'll handle this. Yes, sir. Nancy Lee. What the devil were you doing down in the cellar? No need to take on, so I was... I was just making up my mind where to put the wine cellar. What wine cellar? The one we're going to build in the back there. What for? Well, I intend to start entertaining, having guests to stay... Well, bring this house alive. No. No wine cellar and no guests. And you stay out of that downstairs. Don't you order me around. I'll do what I want in my own house. What did you mean by locking me out of our bedroom last night? I don't allow anyone who can't behave like a gentleman in my room. If you think just by withholding your favors from me, you can get your own way. You listen to me, Buford. One way or another, I always get my own way. And don't you forget it. Master Buford, Master Buford, you can't sleep here on the floor, sir. Well, uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, got to, Hannah. Um, wife won't let me in, in bedroom. Come on, sir. You've been drinking. I've made you up a bed in one of the guest rooms. Want to sleep on bedroom, not guest room. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it, Hannah? Don't have much luck with, with the ladies, huh? Out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> she, she's she got to go. Except can't. Because of baby. Got child to think of. Can't figure that one out. Huh? William, is my horse ready? Morning, Nancy Lee. My, ain't you the prettiest thing? I asked about my horse. Oh, yes, this Nancy. I combed and curled and shined that old horse. Would you bring him around to the front? Yes, sir, Miss Nancy. And the name is Mrs. Montgomery. Yes, Mrs. Montgomery. Oh, get out of my sight. When you bring him around, let me know. I'll be in the parlor. Buford? Here. Hannah said you wanted to see me. I want to talk to you. I'm afraid I don't have time. I'm going riding. That's what I want to talk to you about. Do you think it's wise? What? All this riding in your condition. In my condition? Oh, man. I'd near forgotten. Forgotten? How could you forget the baby you're carrying? I'm sure I wouldn't if I were. Only I'm not. I never had one. What? Oh, Buford, don't splutter so. If you'd half a brain in your head, you'd have realized that long ago. It, it was all a trick. To get me to marry you. At the time, you seemed such a catch, and the competition was a little heavy, so I thought I'd just make sure of you. And it worked. I'm really sorry to have disappointed you about the child. <laughs> disappointed? You don't know how relieved I am. Now there's no problem. What do you mean, no problem? To end this marriage, to get a divorce. You think that's no problem? It shouldn't be. I'm prepared to make a reasonable settlement. And just what would you consider reasonable, Mr. Montgomery? We can waive the money I loaned your father and call it a day. <laughs> the money you loaned my father? 
That wasn't a loan. That was a little payoff for a nice background of Southern gentility to trap me a man. The Colonel and his wife are just as phony as I am, dear heart. And they are long gone. I'm where I want to be with a name I like, and I'm not giving it up for anyone. You are never going to get rid of little Nancy Lee. No how, no way at all. Now, if you'll excuse me, dear husband, I... Why, Hannah. Hello. Did you get a nice earful? The door was open, Mrs. Montgomery, and William asked me to come in here and tell you that he's waiting outside with your horse. He could have told me himself. And I hope that damn beast throws her and breaks her neck. All right, Hannah, what are you waiting for? It's your mother, sir. She's in a state. She insists on seeing you. No. I've had enough of Montgomery women for one day. Tell her I... No. Forget that, Hannah. I've changed my mind. I think I will pay Mama a visit. I have a little surprise for her. But you can't be so cruel, Buford. Keeping me here locked up like a... Like an animal. You... You've got to let me go. You know I can't do that, Mother. I've explained again and again why you can't suddenly turn up alive. Oh, but I can't stand it anymore. It's like being buried alive. Oh, oh, Buford, it's so, so lonely. I know that, Mama. (laughs) And I know it just plain isn't fair. Uh, So I thought of a solution. What, dear? How would you like to have a nice, permanent companion? Did I make an unguarded statement that Buford was no match for the ladies? Perhaps in one sense that's true. But in another, well, it seems that Nancy Lee is going to have cause to regret her match with Buford. We'll find that out shortly when we return with Act Three. It's one thing to get away with disposing of someone already legally certified as dead and supposedly suitably interred. Nancy Lee is another problem. She can't have a convenient epileptic seizure. Can Buford get away with it? Nancy Lee, I've been thinking about us. Don't waste your time. Nothing's going to change. I've got nobody but you and nowhere in the whole wide world to go. I'm a permanent fix, Jim Buford. Oh, I know that, honey. And I was wrong to think anything else. Don't you know I really want you here with all my heart? On my terms. Don't you try to fancy talk me. Won't you please let me tell you what I was thinking about? If you'll make it sure... And sweet. What I was going to suggest, just to clear the air, sort of, and give us both a chance to get a new perspective was a trip. I don't want to go anywhere with you. Oh, I I didn't mean to gather. I meant just you alone, sugar. Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia. You could buy yourself a whole new wardrobe, like like it was the trousseau you never really had. Oh, Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia. Even Paris, France, if you want. Paris, France. Oh, beautiful. Do you mean it? Anything's worth trying just to work things out for us. And to prove I mean it, you, you just go tell all your friends and everyone around that you're on your way. Oh, won't I make them squirm with envy? Washington, Philadelphia, Paris, France. Then you'll go? What woman will pass up the chance? Well, I'll ride everywhere this week and let everyone know. Just one thing, Buford, you ought to understand. Well, what's that, sugar? This doesn't change anything. I'm still going to spend the rest of my life right here in this house. Oh, I know that, Nancy Lee. I know that for sure. You just can't get away with it. Now, you hush up, Hannah. I'm going to. But what will other people say? There's nothing for them to say. Nancy Lee went off on a little trip, and she never came back. Master Buford, you're flying in the face of God. Hannah, to the devil with it. Now, you do as I say, here. Yes, sir. Now, you and William have already got the extra bed set up downstairs and the chest of drawers and so on. Yes, sir. Fine. Then get busy and take all Ms. Montgomery's clothes downstairs. Shouldn't take you too long. Most of her wardrobe is already packed. What am I going to tell your mother? Ever since we moved the extra furniture in, she's been like to to drive me out of my mind asking questions. You haven't told her who to expect. You said not to. That's quite right, Hannah. 
we have to preserve the proprieties. I think it's my place to introduce my mother to my bride. Oh, Miss Montgomery? What is it, Hannah? Master Buford asked me to have you go right downstairs as soon as you got back from riding. But I want a bath and change. He said right away, the moment you got here. Why? He said he had a little surprise for you. Oh, very well. Buford? Nancy Lee? Yes, uh, what do you want me for? Come on down, I'll show you. Oh, for goodness sake. Hold that lantern a little higher, I can't see. Uh, how's that? Better. Right over here by the back wall. Hannah said you had a surprise. Why, Buford, you're going to do it. Do what? Put in my wine cellar while I'm gone. Something like that. Of course, we'll have to build regular bins instead of these old rickety shelves. You know what I thought when I was looking about down here before? Oh, what was that? If we tore down these shelves... Well, what I mean is, I was sort of stepping off the house upstairs, and it's some longer than this cellar. Is it? Yes, I walked off the cellar, too. You suppose there might be any room behind there we could sort of scoop out to make it bigger? Now, why don't you and me just try and find out? Why don't we? Of course, I reckon you'll need help. Oh, I don't think so. It might be quite easy. Like, um, like this, for example. It's a secret door. And a room. There's someone in there. A room you're going to be sharing for a long time. No, no. No, I won't go in Oh, yes, you will. I'll, I'll scream. You, you'll do as you're told. <laughs> you bit my hand. You, you can't. Get in there. You can't keep me in here. I'll scratch your eyes out of... Oh, no, you won't. You'll keep your mouth shut for once and do as you're told. Oh, no, I won't. You wouldn't dare shoot me. Don't tempt me. You'll put, put that pistol down. <gasps> no. It can't be. Who are you? Don't you remember the first Mrs. Montgomery? But she... Your mother. Your mother's dead. A popular misconception. Let's just keep this private, shall we? You... You're really Judge Mont Montgomery's wife? Certainly. Buford, what is this slut doing here? Now, Mama, that's not nice. Isn't this that... Nancy Lee person I warned you to stay away from. Yes, sir. Maybe about the one time you were right, Mama. Well, get her out of here. I don't want her. And I demand you release me, too. You know I can't do that. The best I can do is provide you with Nancy Lee. You're not going to lock me up with this horrid old woman. Now, that's no way to talk to your mother-in-law. Her uh, uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. In all the excitement, I forgot to tell you. Nancy Lee's my bride. We got married. Oh. That makes you both, Mrs. Montgomery. That's how come I thought it would work out real nice to have you roommates. Sort of keep it all in the family. Ma! Ma! Thanks for love, William. You startled me so I almost burnt my hand on the stove. Ma! What are we going to do? What is it, son? Here. Here, sit down. It's shaking all over. You know that big old stone you wanted down in the preserve cellar to make a table of? For making cornmeal and such? Yes. Well, a while ago I took it to bring it on down for you. You lifted that heavy stone by yourself? It's what happened when I was down there. What? Well, I, I didn't have no light. And I didn't hear Master Buford come on down there. But all of a sudden, I see him light a lantern. And as far as I can say anything, Mrs. Montgomery come on down there to join him. I know. I sent her down there. You? You knew what he was going to do to her? Son, you got to understand. I can't help myself. You knew he was going to throw her in that hidey hole with old Mrs. Montgomery? I knew. But she's so pretty. And he hurt her, Ma. Master Buford hurt her. He took that little girl that's like a... like a little chickadee bird. And he's going to shut her up in there. 
Don't think about it now, son. I, I got to think on it. I couldn't be shut up, Ma. I couldn't be shut up nowhere. I know that, son. I'll just take my own throat with my hands like I've done with, with someone a long time ago. I... Don't, William. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> no. Not to me. To Master Buford. To Master Buford, unless he lets her go. That's who I got to. No, William, no. Listen to me. Let me explain. Let me go, Ma. Let go. William, you've got to understand that I... Ma? Ma, are you all right? I hope I, I, I didn't hurt you. Ma? No. You all right? Just sleeping. I'll wake you, Ma. I'll wake you just as soon as I set that poor little bird free. I spent my life trying to get free of you, Mama. And I did. Then I got myself trapped again. Now I've got to get free of Nancy Lee, too. Goodbye. You'll never see me again. You can't leave me here with this old woman. I can't be shut up anymore. You've been drinking again. You look drunk. You... I feel drunk. Drunk with relief. <laughs> Hannah and William are all you'll ever see from now on. As far as I care, you could both rot. Oh. What's that funny smell? My head. I need a drink. What? Who's that? It's me, Master Buford. I'm sorry for... for what I got to do. <laughs> Master Buford. <laughs> Master Buford. I didn't mean to do nothing, Master. I didn't mean to do nothing. It was just... a bird has to fly free. You can't keep it locked up. William. William? Are you down there? I'm here, Ma. What are you doing? What's happened? Where's Master Buford? I'm glad you woke up, Ma. S something's happened to Master Buford. Oh, my God. Move aside. Let me see. I didn't mean him no harm. It was just Miss Nancy. I didn't want to hurt him, Ma. Ma? He's dead. Oh, William. William, you killed him. I never even touched him, Ma. How would you know? Poor, twisted mind. How would you know? Heaven help me. What are we going to do now? I've got to think. Well, I'm all packed. And William is taking my things down to the carriage now. What about you, Mother? <laughs> I suppose you have to call me that. We might as well get used to it. Just as you have to try to sound a little fonder when you talk to your daughter, Nancy Lee. Very well, Nancy Lee. And I not only am all packed, but my trunks have already been taken to the railroad station. All ready for our new life. Yes, Oh, come on now. This was all worked out before the funeral. And you've had a lovely time of it, haven't you? Playing the bereaved widow, being wined and dined in sad farewell. Well, I had to stay hidden at home. Well, you could scarcely come popping out of the grave without creating a legal snarl. I know, I know. It's better this way. I hope we can smuggle me out successfully. At night, in Hannah's cape, there'll be no question. Hmm. Nothing left to be done. I don't think so. Hannah and William will stay with the house until the estate is sold. And the lawyer will forward us the money wherever we settle. <laughs> wherever we settle. You and I. Not much of a life to look forward to. It's the best your son left us. Your husband, Buford. Buford. Uh, I wonder about his death. Why? The doctor certified it is a heart attack. 
You don't think William... Oh, no. William is so simple-minded that if he says he never touched him, he never did. No, it was something else. What? Uh, that was the same doctor who wrote out my death certificate. You don't suppose Buford by any chance could have had epilepsy? It's a disease that does run in the family, you know. If Sarah Montgomery should have been right, then poor Buford went to far more than his just reward. After all, the coffin was already in the ground for over a week. But that's really too horrible a prospect to dwell on, isn't it? I'll return shortly. Before I go, I really do owe you an apology for that quite dreadful picture of poor Buford Montgomery awaking to far more confined quarters than he condemned his mother to. But as a storyteller, you have to agree, the irony is perfect. And then, of course, also, I did promise to curdle your blood. Our cast included John Barragray, Ruby D, Bryna Rayburn, Roxy Roker, and Todd Davis. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.